All right, folks. Um, working on a uh, 923. Um, doing the rear brakes. Um, swapping out all my rear shoes. And we got about 70,000 on something like that range. Um, I'm actually wearing pretty good on that one axle I've already done. Um, so, just a rundown on taking the outer hubs apart. Um, I always mark top dead center on your outer nut. It should be 250 to 400 foot pound when you put that together. You know, it's kind of broad spectrum. Sorry, that's what the government says on TM, which we all know is usually far fetched and unreliable sometimes. Um, the inner nut is 50 foot pounds and a quarter to eighth turn back off to line your lock, your lock uh, washer up. So, you already got your axle out, you got 10 3 quarter inch head bolts on it, uh, half inch threads. Um, so, under the outer nut, head lock washer, inner nut, you got a seal right here, and you got an inner bearing and your outer bearing. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do is mark top dead center on this outer nut, that way it's always going to be in the same spot no matter what you do. So, do that. There she comes. That's all it takes. Two real quick hits. You ain't got to be, it ain't got to be a super strong hit to make sure it's a solid hit. It'll come right on off. Pop your lock washer off. And your inner nut shouldn't be that tight. So I just put a chisel in the thing. A little tit here. Spin it off best you can. If you can have the sockets if you want it. Sorry, you can call it whatever you want to. Somebody, somebody called it something, I don't know, some Neanderthal thing or whatever. Yeah, well, some people don't have a clue, have a clue what they're doing. They're tearing anything up using a chisel because they're morons. Um, if you know what you're doing, you hit it just right, you're not going to have any problems. So, um, you put it back on, you still can use a chisel, just turn it around, use the, scissors, use the blunt end, and uh, go from there. Go ahead. You also make sure your brakes cage too, before you start in this. Give it a little quick cup, cup out. Let her drain some more oil out of her. You got your outer seal and your bearing. Um, this outer seal here. I don't ever replace it. You can criticize me all you want. Um, replacing is pretty stupid. Um, you know, you can you both regrease your inner bearings. That okay? You know, uh, the axle has enough oil in it to saturate them wheel bearings um, while it's running on the highway. In order to keep them cool, my hubs run about 130 degrees max temp, even loaded at 70,000 pounds. So, um, you can spend the extra money buying that outer seal if you want to, but use the old one, axle grease, axle oil, gear oil, I'll keep it all nice and cool. Um, that's totally up to you. Um, I'm going to let it drain here for another minute or two. And slide it off there a little bit. Give it a little bit of, when you can to get more gear oil out of it is just kind of rock this drum back and forth spindle there, I'm not going to hurt your side on the inner bearing, get some more of that gear oil out of the, kind of get the little wave of gear oil coming out of it, so it makes a big of a mess on the ground, um, give it a second, and I normally take a towel in there, slow it down a little bit, Pick it up, slide it off. Hits the edge of that spindle. Grab the back side, front side. Right on down. I actually got a block. The phone's actually sitting on. Let me get that out the way a little bit. I 
get rid of the block here in a second. Change the uh, angle on the brake setup. There we go, but in here it's pretty simple. You ain't got much. Sorry, I'm using the backwards camera. Um, two springs, your uh, adjusters, um, your shoes are actually a marked, marked adjuster side, um, so it's pretty easy. Um, if I can get this camera back some, give you a little better of an angle of what I'm about to do. Um, let me pause this for a second. All right, we're back at it. Um, better angle for you. Um, pretty simple. Got two springs. They got locks on them. So they got locks hold the shoes in place. All right, that locks like from the shoes. Um, just two springs are holding them on. Um, if you got a busted rear seal on your drum, this could get a little messy and nasty in here with all your brake dust and everything else. Alongside a needle nose. Up behind the spring, I just thought maybe it look better on you. Up behind the spring, pull it up. springs anyway you can reuse your old springs if you want to but um, once you get the one side off you only got to fight one in the springs don't let it beat your ass um, don't want the second one to beat your ass anyway grab a hold of your shoe pop it down I had already taken my rear uh, cover already loose take it loose from there Pull it loose. And that's it. Don't let that spring beat the shit out of you. For no goddamn reason. Just saying. Don't call me. To. You might call it barbaric, I guess, or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> gets it off faster and you ain't gonna fight it. Then. <laughs> by all means, call it whatever you want. So. Um. I got some more brake shoes out of here. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, spray it down, be right back. Alright, we're back. Um if you choose to do it whatever way you want, most people don't ever replace their brake shoes on a five ton because I mean I've honestly I've never actually thought about wearing a set out. Um you can see what I have up on these. This is about seventy thousand I think, somewhere in that range. Um of course you can see the new shoe thickness versus the old one. Yeah, they're wearing down pretty good. So, um, you got two adjusters. You got one here, looks like this. Uh, so it'll be on the bottom. Um, of course, you got your spider here. You can buy the whole spider if you want. Back and plate, everything else. Um, it's pretty expensive anymore. They're about, I think, they're 108 dollars from a guy. But they won't have brake shoes on them. But you got this little thing. It's how to adjust in and out. Um, some folks take them apart and degrease them. Just turn it back down clockwise on the back one. Can you reach the bottom. You know, feel a tightness on one, then go back quarter turn. Um, I actually just had that spring can off the other day, so I normally what you want to do is pull this bolt here out, three quarter inch head bolt, and you would want to uh, pull top one out, 
shoot a bunch of grease down in here on your wedge so the wedge will function properly. You can pull this bottom one out. That's a real pain in the butt, especially with the, uh, there's a kit. It's a 1472 or 7214A, Uclid number, which come with these little covers and um, new banjo bolts and stuff like that. Um, I never, I take one or two apart, but I don't do all of them. So, I have a copper banjo bolt on the end of the bolt, just like that, three quarter. Take your hammer, chisel, knock the little cover up. The little cover has an outside lip, so you ain't got to go digging in the damn uh, housing right there. But you pop that out, you can see some of that oil and everything, that grease and everything else in there is pretty stiff up, corroded up. Um, do it however you want, but um, there's no really easy way. I mean, it's actually all easy, but I mean, it's just, there's no, like, different way to do it. Um, one thing you do want to make sure of is you want to look at the bottom of the adjusters on both sides. Take them apart to clean them out or add grease to them and make sure that it does have a mark on it. See the wedge mark? That means your wedge is more than likely working. If it's not, it'll be uh, dull as can be. So, with the new ones, force it over the head of it. For some reason then they're not as this kit from Memphis Equipment. Something they made. These little gaskets and grommets you don't call them. Seals. Um, they're not real friendly. That's good. Should sit in a little thing like that. But um, of course you're gonna wanna And inside of there, you got the. Uh, let's see if I can. Yeah. See your wedge in there. So. You'll want to finish adjusting up the uh, lower one. You'll screw the lower one in clockwise. Bottom it out. And also, when you're in there, make sure your your wedge isn't falling apart. Um, usually, on the wedge is what happens the, the most. Um, just my experience and what I've seen, the spring breaks. Um, the guide on your uh, can plunger will break, and in turn, will actually break off um, the spring. On the back side of the wedge. So, hey, grease gun makes it a lot easier. You can just, you know, get a finger of it, and shove that in there if you want to. Um, when you put the uh, wedge adjusters back in, it's got a notch in it. Um, these ones I got from Memphis Equipment are kind of shit. Well, covers are. They don't want to get it in there just right. I had to fight them. If you use it on this bottom one here, this thing, the weight of this thing actually keeps dragging it out. You can't actually get it. Probably a seat. Um, but. if you want to. I don't. Call me a lazy if you want or whatever. Um, I've been doing these for a while. Um, most people just break the damn thing all together. They don't actually don't do anything else. They just usually break the whole wedge apart. So you just buy the whole spider. back on. Alright. 
make sure all your wedges are down all the way. Um, and then, of course, on your uh, on your shoe, you're gonna have it. We're just gonna say pedestrian. So, we did that. Make sure you get it all cleaned up, spray it down. Try to get some of the brake crap, dust, and everything outside of there. Um, a lot of grime and crap on this one. They hadn't been off in a while. Of course, this is your ABS sensor. We do want to make sure that's all cleaned up and. Pour up or gunked up and give you a false reading and of course make it engage when it don't need to. Um, actually this actually is a 3M spray cleaner stuff, it's actually $2 at Napa. Um, they were a little sad when I bought every case they had. Um, <laughs> so, uh, wait till the customers work kind of, but spray it down, pretty good. Um, of course, this is a non chlorated brake cleaner, so it doesn't do my much. But you know, some bees are flying around, I'll change their mind a little bit. Too. Uh, got any crap on the inside here? Just kind of scrape it off. I mean, mine sees a lot of junk. Most people see their trucks off road, mine doesn't see much off road if, if at all. Um, Just so somebody knows, if you need to adjust your damn brakes, it's not this one. It's not the adjuster in the middle of the middle of the, middle of the sheet bag. It's actually made for the 800 series. It's actually the one on the side, the 90 degree ones. That'd be opposite. Um, here, tuning in at home. This is your lower one. It'll be that one right there. I always take the lower, lower covers off um, just because they usually rattle more than anything else. That's great, but it doesn't keep much debris out of your brakes, and in my opinion, it actually keeps crap in that shouldn't be in there. So, that being said, hit it one more time. And looks pretty anyway. Make sure your rear seal guide is cleaned up and smooth. Otherwise you will go puking. Alright. Sports fans. Hope everybody's Cubs fans, cause yeah, this is gonna be another one of them years. So, um, it says Mark Duster in, and one's marked. So go ahead and put a screwdriver in there a little bit. Just give it a little snug. Yeah. I think the problem is actually that this. Yeah. Clamp's kind of weak. Um. I really want to have adjuster in. I'll be on the bottom side. Them could be a little weak, so when you put it back on, take your chisel, take your hammer. Yeah, that didn't work real well, did it? Give it a little motivational lesson. All right, that's on there. So, 
Um, of course, you know, I ain't gonna preach nobody about using old springs, new springs. As long as nothing's visibly wrong with it, you can reuse it. The, uh, some types of these actually are angled. They have a little angle in them, and it'll have a, both the springs on the end will collapse. And it'll have an angle bar in the middle, and it'll have a little, I have a little hoop to it. When you put them on, the hoop always goes to the outside. Otherwise, it'll start rubbing on your spindle there. So, um, doo -doo -doo. you got some fancy brake tool, you can use it. Um, other thing you can use, um, actually, I'll, I'll grab it so I can show somebody. Hold on just a second. Alright, we're back. Feel like it. A little dinky narrow screwdriver. One you really don't care about breaking if it doesn't break. Um, take it in spring. Back it off a little bit so you can get the screwdriver out of there. Grab it with some channel lock or some dikes. Your screw, you can hold it in, screwdriver in. And that's it. Same thing for the other side. I'm actually going to grab a different spring. The one that came off with a little bent up. But whenever you redo your springs, always spray them down. Um, some people might say, well, now they're not springy. You know, taking away the yeah, well, sometimes the crap in them that is stuck in them is uh, pretty brutal stuff. It's actually hard. It's most of the time actually stronger than the spring. So, once again, take your screwdriver. And the other way you can do it is um, the guy up in Montana, the Nelson Studios, actually works real well for the, for the angle type. Just grab the end of the spring, put a little leverage on it. Um, if you want to bust your knuckles apart on these springs, by all means, go ahead and <laughs> use that method. Um, but a little flex in the screwdriver, goes down. If you guys know that or not, but I mean, it's, it will actually get it back up in there. Any fancy brake tools to do it, um, but it's all it is. Um, your shoes will self-adjust first time you hit the brakes. They will. Well, actually, the way I do it is I actually put the drum back on, release the spring. Well, if you want to cage your brakes, don't sit there all damn day and put your cage and bolt in with the damn brakes still not released. Chalk your wheels, drop your emergency brake off so that your uh, one of your valve can. Send brakes, send air to your rear spring cans. It actually will pull your spring can springs back by using air pressure. Stick your damn cage and bolt in there. Turn it, it takes, three, takes less than three or four seconds. It's only three or four turns and it's down and out and you're done. Um, same way when you're doing it, like this way. Put your drum back on, fire your truck up, air it up. Release the spring brakes, make sure your wheels are chalked. It's only two or three turns of the nut on your uh, cage and bolt, it's loose. And then you can go up there, put your, put your parking brake back on, and then just check your brakes, make sure it actually is holding. I mean, make sure your wedge is actually engaging. You know, if you got a bad wedge, I mean, you'll know it right then. Um, so, I'm gonna look at it that way. Um, kind of an easy way to do it. Uh, other way you can do it, and it's not unsafe, or I mean, actually, just make sure they're working. You can release your spring brake, your Cajun bolt out of your spring can, with the truck running, release it. But to drum off, just make sure they actually engage. Works better with two people, that way you can actually hit the service brakes instead, make sure that it's actually springing. Um, it won't adjust out that damn far. Um, you may have to pop it up and roll it back some, but not a big deal. Um, so, I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, drum back on. This is the worst part of the whole job. Um, 
I'm not replacing the rear seal in mine. Um, the real seal, rear seals in these things are actually pretty well junk anymore that they make aftermarket wise. So what you can do, um, if you have to take one out, get you a long crowbar, send the damn thing up on its hub end with a, with a drum, you know, facing up. Put your crowbar in there, put your foot inside the drum, and basically just keep slamming the crowbar against the uh, outer drum and it will pop the seal out pretty simple and quick and easy. Um, I think it's like 10 hits maybe and it comes right out and I'm fighting that damn thing. The uh, <laughs> other part of it still, so putting it back in part is horrible. Um, so make sure your uh, drum is cleaned out though. Um, you know, you, you may have some little bit of grease and stuff in there, oil and actual oil in there from when you set it down. So, of course, if you want to turn your drums, by all means, go ahead and do it. Um, some of those places that I'll be happy you showed up because it's pretty expensive to turn these big things. They even will turn them. Most of them just say they're out of specs and they don't want to deal with it. But, you better do it, roll it close as you can to your hub. Pick it up. Set it up on there. Yeah, of course, you can axle, axle grease everywhere. You gotta love that shit, it's horrible. So, you gotta have a little rock in there when you put it back on. Do you get seated up all the way? Um, make sure you grab your. If you put a rag in there or whatever, make sure you do grab it back out. Bounty absorbent. Sports fans are back. So our mailman, mail lady, brought me a bunch of goodies that, if you were married, your wife would probably tell you you didn't fucking need. So, um, of course, I said earlier, don't ever replace the outer seal. This is gonna leak anyway. Um, you can throw some grease in there if you want to for those inner bearings. I don't. Um, make sure you nut with the kit. Because on the outside, <laughs> all right. Preload setting. You can listen to that stupid team if you want to. But I've always done it off feel, so I don't never trust a torque wrench. Just go spin it pretty freely. Take your chisel, use a chisel, put it up against that tit. As tight as you can get it, it's about 25 pounds pounds. Um, if you want to tighten it down, eh, sounds okay. Still a little free. Eh, still a little more free. And there we go. Should feel a little bit resistant when you push on it. Not much, but enough that you can. And you should put basically a little bit of strain on your wrist to push it around. Now you can still see it's spinning pretty freely there. Um, also, want to grab a hold of it, make sure there's no in or out movement. That way, you do know that your inner bearing is seated up on the uh, 
inner bearing and your uh, seal, inner spindle and the inner seal is seated up. There we go. That's pretty good. So we're gonna take your block washer. As you can tell, it's not lining up right here. So you either get to go forward or you go backwards, whichever one you really want to do. I'm actually gonna go forward. Just a cut here. To make it work. Stick your washer up on there, leave it up on there. Okay, so you can know where you gotta be. And it's down. Where we had the numbers sitting at near 12 o'clock. Actually, like 11:30. So we're in that range. Put it back down. And then you'll do is you'll reach behind and touch this seal. Make sure it has no in and out play and then no down play. Good to go. Roll it, put your axle back in, and row on down the road. Um, at this point, I know mine's gonna dress up just fine. You can fire the truck up, take the brake off, pull that, make sure it does lock it on the uh, uh, spring brake. So, I mean, on my wisdom, you'd actually kind of pain in the butt. You slide it in, you feel it bottom out. Pull it back about an eighth of an inch, rock it up, 